Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to my painting channel. I'm Pete Bain and today I have an oil painting demonstration that I'd love to share with you. And I think you're really, really going to enjoy this one. This is a painting of a raven and I've added a fun and interesting background with this historic wallpaper pattern. I think they combine to become a very, very cool painting. So I want to share that process with you and I encourage you to paint along with me or just watch and enjoy. Thanks very much for watching. Let's get started. After toning, my first job is to fit the subject within the borders of the canvas. For this painting, I want to be sure I get the entire bird in the canvas. I don't want the tail to get cropped or the beak to just kiss the edge of the canvas awkwardly. So I began by finding the extreme edges and then I work on connecting those edges. It's so tempting to start with an interesting detail or the focus of the painting and draw that perfectly, ignoring the rest of the mass. For example, many of us will want to begin the drawing by focusing on the beak, but you can't do that. The beak will be in the wrong place or be too big or too small. Often the proportions will be wrong because it's difficult to draw this beak accurately without the rest of the bird as a reference to its size, shape, and angle. We should always begin with the biggest shapes we can find, and as the painting progresses, overlay smaller shapes within those big shapes. So, I outline the mass of the object first, then drill down to all the details, including the beak. What I did is find the highest point of the head and the lowest point of the tail, and then the lengths and angles of the lines connecting these points. Now I am satisfied with the drawing. It's not perfect, but I know that I will fine tune it as we move through the painting, and it's very close. So I'm ready to move on. It's, it's simplest to think of this bird in two or three values. Try not to think of it as a as a bird or feathers or sky. It's simply uh, shapes and masses of value and color. I block in the dark blacks and the shadow parts of the mass, and then I blocked in the lighter gray parts of the mass. After thinly painting in those large shapes, I can add some more detail. For example, additional darker shapes representing the edges where the feathers overlap. With the bird fully painted in, it was easy to, to, to determine that my lighter masses were too light. So I darkened them a bit. Next, I moved on to the background. This is an opportunity to get creative with color or pattern or brush strokes. In this image, uh, the most important thing is to let the subject, the raven, stand out. So to that end, I want to keep the background simple and light in value. I painted it in uh, as a teal color, uh, which is also thinned with solvent. And this is actually one of my favorite parts of the process. This is where I can use the background, the negative space, to fine tune the edges, the drawing of my large masses. I used one brush with the background color to carve away from the shape, and another brush with dark value to add to it. Several small corrections help give the raven a more realistic look. I really like the spooky, raw, wild, somewhat evil profile that this bird projects. With the block incomplete, I usually go back in and reinforce my dark values and refine my forms with some highlights and generally add some more detail to bring it closer to realism. So at this point, I had a sense of what the finished painting would look like, and I felt the background was quite large and needed something more interesting than just some chunky brush strokes or a value gradation. I have seen some painters use historic wallpaper to a really cool effect, and I decided to try that myself. I found a pattern that I liked, and I painted it over the green background. And now I got to tell you, I was so excited to see the background come out in a time lapse. I thought it was going to look so great, but I am a colossal Dumbo. 
and I must have forgotten to record this section. And when I discovered this during editing, let's just say there was a lot of cursing going on. Ugh. Well, I can't dwell on that. Suffice it to say, I painted in the pattern. The process wasn't too bad. Uh, it was a little boring, but, but uh, I stuck with it, and, and it came out fairly well. And, and then I painted in the background green in between the leaf pattern to crease, crisp it all up. And I deliberately made that uh, green value, uh, that green color closer in value to the leaf pattern so that the whole passage would fade and not compete with the raven. I really wanted it to supplement the subject and not compete with it. The final step in this painting was to go back into the raven and really develop the form. So I added more feather lines and I put highlights on the left and upper upper side where where the, uh, he was the, the bird was receiving more light from the sky. And in order to tie the bird into the background and to avoid having it look like a paper cutout, I used some of the light ochre color from the leaf design for the highlights. And I also dragged some of the edges of the raven into the wallpaper pattern to try to merge the two passages. We don't need every edge on the bird to be crisp and clear. And in fact, it's, 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 uh, it can really help your painting if some of the edges are soft and light and smeared and some of the edges are hard and crisp. And those hard and crisp edges can be uh, more focused around the, uh, the focus of the painting. And the, here is the, the head of the bird and the beak. So here is the finished painting. I'm really pleased with it. I am sorry for uh, skipping the part where I drew out the pattern. I hope you'll forgive me, uh, but uh, the painting looks very nice, I believe. And I love painting birds, and I love, and I think ravens are especially interesting and cool. And I think the wallpaper pattern is a perfect complement to it. So I'm going to definitely use this uh, device in future paintings. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and click the thumbs up button. I'll see, I'll see you next time. Take care.